Hello from Seattle, PyCon. I miss you. Um, but I'm also really excited to be here anyway, talking to you about pyambic pentameter, or how to generate rhyming and metered poems with Markov chains and NLTK. And I promise we're going to unpack that title, but really what it means is that we are going to do Poetry 101 for computers. So we are going to teach computers how to write a poem. Uh, what kind of poem, perhaps you might ask, or what is a poem? Let's talk about that first with Poetry 101 for humans. So poetry encapsulates a lot of things, but mostly it's about using words to create art. Um, and it, it's more than just using the meanings of words to, to evoke beauty and emotion. It's about using the properties of those words. It's about using how those words sound and feel, or maybe even look on the page. We're going to run through some pretty simple example poems to try to figure out what properties a computer might be able to handle. Here's one. There was a child had a hood. He liked it so much it was good. This is labeled, it's the first poem I ever wrote. Shout out to my parents for keeping this. Um, what makes this a poem? Well, it's got a rhythm. There was a child had a hood. And it rhymes. Hood. Good. It's a good start. Let's look at something else. We all love the goose in the game who's recently waddled to fame. A nihilist force devoid of remorse, a bird without pity or shame. Shout out to the Untitled Goose Game. So this is a common form of poetry and it's a limerick. And the properties of a limerick include two rhyming lines at the start that are longer, two shorter lines that rhyme with each other, and then one line that wraps it up and rhymes with the first lines. Uh, it's got a rhythm to it. We all love the goose in the game. It's kind of rollicking. Um, and this form of poetry is really commonly used for humorous poems. Kind of like this one. Here's another traditional form of poetry that you might recognize. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. So this is one of Shakespeare's 154 sonnets that got published as a collection. And what's remarkable about every single one of these sonnets is that they all have the same format. They are all 14 lines. Every other line rhymes with each other in, in stanzas of four lines until you get to the last two and those make a rhyming couplet. Every line in every poem has the same number of syllables and more than that, every line in every poem has the same pattern of syllables. All of them are 10 syllables long and all of them are made of iams, which means that the syllable pattern goes unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So all of these, one thing all of these had in common is a rhyme scheme. All of these poems have multiple lines that end in the same sound and meter. There's a pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables, and that's consistent across the poem, or at least across certain lines in the poem. And this is a good sign because computers are really good at patterns. And we're going to be able to use that to teach computers to make poetry. Before we get there, we're going to need to teach the computer to make words. So there's a lot of ways to generate random text with computers. You can do anything from pick random words out of a dictionary and string them all together and hope that you get something sensible to use AI or neural net or machine learning techniques to read thousands of pages of text that were written by humans and generate text that looks like it based on features that the, the AI identifies. And we are going to split the difference. We're going to take the Goldilocks baby bear approach and use a technique that is really easy to understand, but also gives some really good output. And this technique is called Markov chain generation. So Markov chains are based on the idea that the word order matters, or at least it does in English. The cat sat on the wall is a sentence that means something, but the sat wall on the cat might not mean the same thing, and it might not even mean anything. Uh, even though the words are all the same, it's just the order that they're in that's different. So the idea behind Markov chain text generation is that you use a source text to determine a valid word order, and then you utilize that to pick words in a certain order that might make sense. So I have chosen a source text in honor of the newly introduced walrus operator, and this is the chorus of I am the walrus. Uh, thank you, John Lennon. I am the egg man. They are the egg men. I am the walrus. Goo 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 -joob. So the way we're going to use this to generate text, 
The first thing we do is we randomly pick one of these words. I've picked I. Then we take a look at every word that occurs in the text. In this case, it occurs twice in our source text and every time it's followed by the word am. So when we pick what word might come next after I, it's going to be am. After am, we again look back to the source text. Every time we see the word am, it's followed by the word the, so our next word is the. And now we take a look at where the is in the source text, and we see that it occurs three times. Twice it's followed by the word egg, and once it's followed by the word walrus. So we are going to pick between egg and walrus with a two-thirds probability that the next word is going to be egg, and a one-third probability that the next word is going to be walrus. Statistically, we get egg. And now, when we look at egg, we've got a 50-50 chance of picking man or men. And in this case, we've picked men. So here's our new sentence. I am the Eggman that we generated randomly based on this source text. So note that any adjacent pair of words, am the Eggman, Eggmen, I am, they're all in the original text, but the output sentence is not found there. I am the Eggman does not occur. Brand new text. So we've done this in the abstract. Let's do this in Python. We're gonna start by building a model. And if you're a beginner, don't be put off by this. This is a really abstract concept, but all it means is that we're going to go through our text and organize the information that we find there in such a way that we're going to be able to use that information later in a way that makes it easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through every word in the source text and record which words come after it so that when we're picking words randomly, we are going to be able to access what comes next easily. So the first thing we do is we take our source text, which is just a long string of words, and we split it into words by white space. Thank you, Python, for making this super easy. <laughs> We're gonna initialize our model to an empty dictionary. And then for every word in our source text, text except for the last word, if that word's not already in our model as a key, we're going to add it, and we're going to initialize the value to an empty array. Then we're going to take a look at the word that comes after this word in our list. Um, and that's why we can't use the last word because we don't know what comes after that and we don't want to run off the end of the list. And we're going to add that word to our model in the list. Then we're just going to return it. So what this looks like when we run it on our chorus of I am the walrus is this. And the information in here should look pretty familiar. When you see the word I, it's followed by the word am twice. When you see the word the, it's followed by the word egg, the word egg, and the word walrus. And the reason we don't uniquify any of this is because if we just add every word as we see it, then when we're randomly picking a word that comes after the, we're going to kind of get for free uh, the idea that egg occurs twice as often as walrus after the word the, and that's convenient. So the next step is to use this to actually generate text. And we're going to start with the source text and also the number of words we need to generate. And spoilers, we're going to use the random module. So the first thing we do is we build that model that was just in the last slide. And then we randomly choose one of the words in that model or one of the keys in that dictionary um, and use that to initialize our output list. For the number of words we want to generate, we're going to look at the last word that we generated, and this is why we start with a seed word in our output. We're going to randomly choose from the list of words associated with the last word in our model, the next word, and add that to our output. And then just keep going through that until we hit something that's not in the model, uh, which means we've hit the last word and we don't know what can come after that. So in that case, we're just going to break early or until we exit the loop and we've uh, generated the number of words that we want to generate. And then we return our output joined as a string. So when we run this on our chorus text, here's one thing we might get. The Eggmen, I am the Eggman, they are the walrus, goo 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 joob. And this should look pretty familiar because it's really close to the original text. It's got the same concept like Eggman, Eggman, walrus, but it's got some unique turns of phrase. They are the walrus is not, it's new. That's awesome. So this is not the only thing you might get because we're using random, uh, because we're using random picking. So something else you might get, 
Men, I am the walrus, goo goo joop. Or my personal favorite, goo 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 joop. So this is awesome, right? I can write something entirely new using the words of my favorite song or play or documentation or Twitter feed. If I use a book, I can get some fanfiction out of this. Uh, if you combine two very different sources, then you can get some really entertaining results. And I would love to see what you come up with. Um, and here's where I took this. I turned to my favorite natural language tool, the Python's Natural Language Toolkit, or NLTK. So this contains, this, this library contains a whole bunch of tools that are really incredibly powerful. Um, it can help, it has corpuses of related words like place names. It has tools to help you diagram a sentence and determine what part of speech every word in a sentence is. It has tools to take a sentence and help you analyze whether it's full of happy words or angry words or sad words uh, called sentiment analysis. But what I was looking for here is the Carnegie Mellon Pronouncing Dictionary or nltk.corpus.cmudict. And this is a dictionary, like literally in both senses of the word, in that it's a list of a lot of words in the English language, including like some place names, brand names, people names that you might not find in a formal dictionary. Um, and it's a dictionary in the Python sense. So what this looks like once we import and load the dictionary, and then we're gonna look up a word in it. I've chosen like one of the most fabulous words in the English language, Python. And here's what it's gonna give us. It's gonna give us a list of pronunciations of that word, where a pronunciation is a list of sounds in the word. So when we enter Python, it's gonna give us the sound, uh, a representation of the sound p followed by i, th, uh, n. And that's a standardized breakdown of how to pronounce the word Python. So the reason it's a list of lists is because there might be a word that has multiple pronunciations, like this one. If you use this as a verb, as in I need to separate you two, you're going to pronounce it differently from if you use it as an adjective. These two were separate things. So the way our pronunciation dictionary handles this is it gives us all of the different pronunciations. So in this case, the valid pronunciations of this word are separate, separate, or separate. So most of the information in these pronunciations is the sound, s, a, p, etc. Um, but you'll also notice that some of, the, some of the sounds have numbers next to them, and this is how the dictionary designates syllables. A one means an emphasized syllable, a zero means an unemphasized syllable, and a two means a syllable with secondary emphasis, which means you kind of can emphasize it or unemphasize it depending on how you like. And, and both of them will sound okay. So the first entry here, separate, you can say it's separate, or you can say it's separate, and both of those will be fine. But if you try to say separate, it's gonna sound different. It's, it's interesting to know that not every language has this concept of emphasized and unemphasized syllables per word. Like in French, a word is a word, and what gets emphasized depend on, depends on where in the sentence it is. But in English, a word's syllable emphasis is part of how you pronounce it. So now we have all the tools we need because we know how to generate words and we know how to pronounce those words with a computer. So back to poetry. So the parts from earlier that we wanted to replicate with computers were rhyme and meter, and we're gonna tackle them separately. Let's start with rhyme. So I'm not gonna lie, this feels like a total hack. Like one of those interview questions, those really horrible ones where either you see the trick immediately or you never get there. So it's hard to control where you're gonna end up when you're generating words with Markov. So if you want to end up on, if, if you wanna generate two separate paths and end on words that rhyme with each other, you're just gonna have to get lucky at some point. However, it's easy to control where you start. Um, remember when we picked our first word randomly? What if we didn't pick it randomly? What if we picked two words that rhyme with each other and then go backwards. So we are gonna make a list of all the words in the source text that rhyme, start with one of those, and generate backwards. This involves modifying our earlier text generation algorithm to instead of building a model going forwards through the text, we're just gonna go backwards through the text. The computer can do it just as easily either way, even if it's harder for us to reason about. So 
In order to make this easy for ourselves, we're going to create a new data structure. We're going to go through every word in the source text, all the unique ones, look up how they're pronounced, cut off that pronunciation at the last and emphasize syllable because that's how we as English speakers determine whether something rhymes. Then we'll pick two words that we know have the same sound and generate backwards from there. So here's what this data structure might look like. So I made a set of all the distinct words in the song, I am the walrus. I looked them up by pronunciation in the dictionary. I sliced the pronunciation off at the last emphasized syllable designated by a one in the pronunciation dictionary to find the rhyme sound. And then I collected them all by that rhyme sound. I discarded all of the ones that didn't have at least two words that rhymed. And this is what I ended up with. So for example, this first line uh, is grouped by the sound O. And in here we have grow, row, po, and ho. So when I want to generate a rhyming couplet, I randomly pick one of the sounds. And in this case, I've picked the, the sound I. Then I take the value of that. I randomly pick two of the words out of there, sky and sty. And I use those as seeds to generate using my backwards Markov model and then reverse the output. So what we get, for example, might be cornflake waiting for the sky and Eggman, you've been a sty. So this is great, it definitely rhymes, but it doesn't sound like poetry yet. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. Even though these have the same number of words, they have different numbers of syllables. And that's where the meter comes in. So generating with meter is a little more complicated, but what we're gonna do is we're going to start with the meter we want. And as we generate text, we're going to check each word against that meter to see if what we've generated so far fits what we're looking for. If a word that we've picked doesn't fit, we'll throw it out and try a different option. If none of the options, if we, if we hit a dead end and if none of the options fit the meter, then we have to backtrack. We have to discard the word that led us there and see if we ha can find a different branch anywhere else. So this technique is called backtracking. And here's how it works. We're going to start with the meter we want. I've picked iambic pentameter here. That's the set of 10 syllables where every other syllable is emphasized, starting with an unemphasized syllable. And I've chosen to represent it as a string of ones and zeros, where a zero is an unemphasized syllable and a one is an emphasized syllable, just like it is in the pronunciation dictionary. So we're going to keep track of what we've found so far as we generate text. Just like in vanilla Markov generation, we're going to start by picking a word, any word. And in this case, I picked little. So what happens when we look up little in our pronunciation dictionary is that it gives us this set of sounds, l, e, t, a, o. Um, but importantly for right now, it gives us the emphasis, and that is little, not little. Um, the, the first syllable is stressed, so we can take the emphasized and then unemphasized syllable that it's given us as pronunciation and check that against the pronunciation that we're looking for, the, the syllable stress we're looking for. Um, but what we notice here is that it doesn't match. And that means little can't be our first word in a set of iambic pentameter. So we're gonna try something else. I'm, sure, that can be unstressed. Let's see what's next. I'm crying. So far, so good. Crying is an emphasized syllable followed by an unemphasized syllable because our sentence starts with an unemphasized syllable. We're doing, we're matching the pattern so far. Let's keep going. I'm crying yellow matter custard. And we're almost there. Look, we've only got one syllable to go. Unfortunately, if you know the song, I am the walrus, you might know that yellow matter custard, the phrase only appears once in the entire song. Specifically, custard only appears once in the entire song. And that means there's only one word that can come next. And that word is dripping. So we found 11 syllables, but that doesn't match what we're going for. We're going for 10. And that means we can't use the word dripping. But that means, because there are no other options to come after custard, we can't use custard either. And that's true for both matter and yellow. So now we're almost back to square one, <laughs> but we've still got to start. Let's see what other options we might have after the word crying. Here's one, sitting. I'm crying sitting. I'm crying sitting in the sky. So far so good, we're at eight out of 10. And so far we all match. But what comes next is C. And the pronunciation dictionary is generous about the pronunciation of some one-syllable words, the common ones like the or in or I'm. 
but if it's a word that has meaning, then the pronunciation dictionary is going to tell us, no, this one syllable word needs to have emphasis. And that means we can't use sky and sea together when we're looking for iambic pentameter, so we have to back up. And it turns out there's nothing that comes after sky except for sea, so we have to delete that word too. But now, we've still got options. I'm crying sitting in the walrus goo. Ta-da! Yay! So now we've talked about how to generate lines that rhyme, and we've talked about how to generate lines that have meter. So we're going to put them together, and we're going to put them together with Python. So in order to generate a simple poem, the inputs we need are a source text, um, which is just one long string, the meter that we're looking for, in this case, iambic pentameter, the zero one unit times five, and the number of lines that we're going to generate that rhyme with each other. In this case, I've just picked two or a couplet, two lines that rhyme. So what we're going to do with these, first we're going to build our backwards Markov model uh, using the source text, and this is a list of words that come before other words. Then we're going to build our list of what rhymes with each other. And we're using the K input here so that we can throw out every word that doesn't have at least K rhymes. So if we're looking for three lines that rhyme with each other, like we might if we're generating a limerick, then we'll need to know that any rhymes we find are going to have at least two other options. Out of all of our rhyme options, we're going to choose one of those sounds that we found that has at least that number of rhymes. Out of all of the words that rhyme with each other, we're going to choose K of them to act as our seeds. And then for each of those seeds, we're going to generate one line following the meter uh, and append that to our output and then string all our output together. So I'm not actually going to show you the output of this program because I promise it's not that interesting when you just run it on the lyrics of I am the walrus. There's not enough words to create iambic pentameter rhyming couplets um, that aren't already in this song. So instead, let's look at what happens when you give this the power of all the Beatles lyrics. My live demo. <laughs> we'll do it live. So I've wrapped this code in a Flask app and I've deployed it to my personal website. Um, and I'm gonna tell it that I want a sonnet in the style of the Beatles, which means that behind the hood, it's using every lyric the Beatles ever wrote all put together. Let's go. And what it gives us. Believe in me will ask a wooden cup. Her on and rocky said it gets annoyed. It over honey tasting much it up and roll a banker never have enjoyed. Was of illusion never heard the book. A home with eyes the writer if the park. Can do will I was wrong location took. Return it over me can feel a lark. <laughs> Simoleon pilchards climbing up his hands. Years since it's up for everyone can learn. To hold her own, it's far behind the bands. The first and I'd been nothing else can turn. The plane into a banker never shows that everybody, everybody knows. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching remotely. I miss you, PyCon. Please come talk to me on Twitter. This is my handle about text generation or linguistics or, or poetry or anything you want. Um, this code is all deployed at this website. And all of my source code and slides are online at this GitHub repo. I hope you're all staying safe and creative, and I can't wait to see you next time.